This is such an exciting day for you. Why? Because God has good news, and good news transforms your life. The Bible is full of good news, and what you will hear today will deal with your anger. Have you ever had a problem with anger? Do you ever just get mad at people when you're driving? You'd like to slap them sideways because they pull in front of you or they stop. Mm. And then there can be a lot of opportunity for anger. But how do you deal with it? What does the Bible say? How can you come out of this better than when you began? I have a guest today that is just out of this world and she's written a book on anger. And Deborah Pagay, thank you for being with oh, us. We'd love to have thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. <laughs> and tell us, how did you get this book out? I well, mean, what, uh, you know what, Marilyn? I on? noticed that people have a hard time just dealing with daily displeasures. So this book really isn't about uh, rageaholics. It's about what do you do when you encounter these situations where you just don't feel good about it. You, you, you're displeased with it. So whether it's a mild form of displeasure, uh, for instance, maybe you're just irritated or frustrated or even infuriated. We all encounter those. And I am determined that Christians need to be, be able to, to uh, show some joy because joy is our calling card. Yes. And so I wanted to just put some teaching out there on how to maintain your joy, whether you're irritated, frustrated, or infuriated. <laughs> <laughs> so you do the three levels yes, here. Yes. Tell me about those three levels and tell everybody out here. And if you need prayer concerning this kind of situation in your life, hey, pick up the phone and call us. We don't counsel, but we pray. This is very important for you today. Well, let me just talk about irritation because anger really uh, ha has different depths and different duration. So an irritation is just then a temporary feeling of displeasure. Maybe I don't like the fact that you smack your lips when you eat or something. Or maybe you just have some annoying behavior, tapping a pencil. How do I encounter that, interact with you, and still maintain my peace? And so um, what I'm in the book, I'm talking about, first of all, about the fact that the fruit of the Spirit can help us through anything. But this isn't just theory. I give uh, examples of people who who survive uh, situations like that. And even in my own life, you see, at first I didn't think I could write about anger, but then I realized I grew up in an angry household. Uh, I was always something going on in that household. And so I thought there's got to be a better way to live. And as a Christian, I want to always demonstrate that I have the peace because I want people to ask me, how is it that you keep your joy? Mm -hmm. And so when, I, when I'm irritated, I'll say, Holy Spirit, I need the fruit of patience to manifest itself in my life right now because patience is a fruit of the the Spirit. It is only produced by the Spirit. That's why if you're going to be in an irritating situation, you can experience that. That's why in the Bible it talks about be angry, but sin not. Right. So how do I experience this? Because a lot of people think that it's a sin just to get angry, but it's a God-given emotion. And so we can be angry. We can experience the emotion. We don't have to deny it. I'm displeased with this situation. But you can do that, but not have an ungodly response. And so that's what we're talking about today. So you're talking about bridging it and really making it a blessing in your life yes. instead of a curse. Yes. And it tells you a lot about yourself because anger really is a signal that something is wrong. Right. So and I need to ask myself, what's wrong? What needs to change? What do I need to change? Because it's not always that somebody else needs to change. Sometimes I need to change. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can see Jesus in our circumstance, we will change. Absolutely. And the fruit of the Spirit is so interesting to me <sighs> because when you get born again, you experience love, joy, peace, and you say, well, you know, the others come later. Yeah. It doesn't say that. That's right. That's right. They all come in the new birth. Absolutely. And we have to realize that we have it in us. So when we have the Spirit of God, to the extent that we're not manifesting that fruit, it's because we haven't given the Spirit free reign in that area. So I know that sometimes I haven't given the Spirit free reign in my area of patience. So when I'm frustrated with people because they don't grasp something, then I say, okay, all right, fruit of the Spirit, <laughs> come help me. Because I, I, I did yesterday a little test on my way here. I went to the airport and I said, I'm going to just kind of be conscious of how many times I encounter a, a, a situation that causes me displeasure. So whether it's from the clearing the, the security at the airport or I found out I was walking to the wrong gate and it was just taking forever. And I thought, I am so frustrated because that's another form of anger. The frustration has to do with the fact that somebody or something is blocking a goal. And so it's blocking my progress. And I thought, let me stop because you know what? All things work together for good. So I have to tell myself that. So we, we we get into self-talk. What do you tell yourself when you are frustrated? Because if God is really orchestrating my life, I really need to stop and think God is up to something. And self-talk is saying to yourself what God says, 
not self-taught. Right. <laughs> I'd like to blast right. them or trip them or do something right, like that. Right, right. And maybe you feel like you live in frustration. You know, sometimes your circumstances and you're telling us about yes. your home where there's just always frustration. And so you say, well, it's just contagious. That's, that's what I'm into. But you know what? You have Jesus in you if you're born again Christians. So call us for prayer. Don't just sit there and say, well, I'm not that bad. Call us for prayer. Because any displeasure, you need help. You and need help. we're there not to counsel, but we'd just love to pray with you. And you know what? I like, I like that you just reminded me that we say what God has said. Because last week I had to speak somewhere, and it was a really key engagement that I wanted to go to for a long time. And uh, I left my purse at home after I had, on my way there, several miles from home, and I discovered I had left my purse. And I said, oh, man, I got to go back. But I really wanted to meet this certain person. And to make a long story short, every, every encounter that I had that day that tried to appear to thwart my, my progress, God was orchestrating it. When I got to the place, the person I wanted to meet was coming down the ramp. And that person wasn't even scheduled to be there for six hours, oh. for another six hours. Oh. But I said, you know what? All things do work together for good. And nobody can thwart God's purpose for your life. And so I'd like to kind of throw that out as a truth that people need to embrace. Isaiah 14, 27, behold, the Lord has purposed. Who can thwart him? Nobody can thwart God's purpose. So why do we need to experience all of this frustration, extra adrenaline flowing and, you know, shorten our lives? True. <laughs> when we could just say, you know yeah. what, God, you're working it out. And that you have to fight to do that. You have to remind yourself to do that. Everything is working out rather than just responding in a negative way. This is what I really use a lot is Romans 8, 31. Mm -hmm. What shall we say to these things? Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about things, we talk against things, but to speak to that thing and say, God says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that thing you're upset over, speak the promises of God to the thing. Absolutely. Not just talk about it. Yes. Don't and, you agree? Oh, I, I absolutely do. And people say, oh, that's easier said than done. I say, if you don't say it, you won't do it. Good. If you don't say it, you won't do it. That's why if I'm really angry with someone, I'll say, I just released that person because I put that faith out there. Faith comes by hearing. So I'll say, I release that person. If I don't say it, God is working this out. I need to say it because the faith you comes do. by hearing. And you I do. need to hear myself making that kind of a declaration based on the scriptures that God is working this out. And I think you need to say it to others too. Say it to the yes. thing, but say it to yourself. Yes. Say it to the devil. Yes. <laughs> Let him know. <laughs> and then, because the word really overcomes the devil. Well, the it does. word of our testimony. And we will have what we say. I know people think that, oh, that's just, you know, that's a big promise. I even had a publisher to tell me that once. We don't want to make those big promises. <laughs> I'm thinking like, no, this is the word. This Do we have word. a little God or a big God? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And we can live at peace if we begin to live that, make that a habit. I, that's why I'm, I'm really big, as you, I know you are, memorizing scriptures so that I have a repertoire of yes. principles that I can yes. reach and just grab and hold on to when I'm feeling angry and frustrated. And I say, God, all things, all things are working together for my good. Because I know I love God. I'm called according to his purpose. This has a purpose. And you know, last night someone called me late and uh, just dumped all their problems, you know, right before you're gonna <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> and I think, oh, you know, I've got to sleep, I have television yeah. taping, blah, 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 blah. And then I began to speak mm -hmm. what God says. Yes. I can rest, he gives his beloved sleep. I take this problem, I cast it on the Lord, yes. and he knows how to take care of it. And I wanna say something to you. I just have a scripture for you. You know, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. But the next verse says, the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If you don't get the care on him, the devil can chew on you. And we don't want the devil chewing on you. And of course we want to pray with you. Here we have this wonderful guest, Deborah, sharing these wonderful things that really work. I mean, they, I would have to say this is a very practical program, but we also always want to pray for you. That's, that's a real passion with both Sarah and me and Deborah. Yes, I like it that, I like that word cast, because it means to toss quickly. That means don't carry, cast all your cares. Don't try to figure it out first and make God the last resort, make him your first resort. Right, So you right. cast it, toss it quickly. The minute it comes up, you toss it quickly and say, Lord, I thank you that you're well able to do this. I'm not able in my own strength, but you can do it. And I think saying that, 
Yes. I, you know, I heard all these things, these problems, and I said, Lord, I cast all the care of this person on you because yes. the devil's not going to chew on me and I'm going <laughs> to sleep tonight. And so it's true. Yes. Do it quickly. Yeah, do don't it quickly. play with it. Yeah, don't play with it. Don't try to carry it. Don't try to bring God down to your sense realm where you've tried to figure it out and now you're at the point you just can't figure out what to do. You right. have to be like Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20. He said, I don't know what to do. I think God is looking for us to say that up front. I don't know what to do. Yes, yes. I love this. And uh, this is in Isaiah. You know, 53 gives us the seven provisions of Jesus mm -hmm. on the cross. But 54 says, sing, O barren. Mm. And so we can see all those provisions, but we don't see them working. Yes, so yes. what do we do? We sing. Yes. And when the barren sing the next two verses, mm. it says, man, you will break out and reach the world singing in your circumstance. I'm telling you, Marilyn, I have learned that. I, I have a little song that I just keep, and it's a simple song that says, I still have joy. I still have joy. Of all yes. the things I'm going through, I still have joy. When I hear myself saying that, I feel joyful. <laughs> I right, do. right. Yeah, I and do. I name the day. This yeah. is a joy day, and so you run into all mm. these things, displeasure, as you yeah, call them yeah, so nicely. Yeah. But oh, <laughs> man. And then I say, now, wait a minute. I've already named this day Joy Day. That's I've good. already named this day Peace Day. Mm, and this good. is so key for you. You know, folks, frustration and stress, that really takes away from your mental, emotional, physical health. And so we're dealing with issues that work every day, all of us. We have so many opportunities to have displeasures, but we have so many opportunities to turn it into a miracle. Now, we're going to take a little break, just little, 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 and Deborah will be right back with me, and you will love this second part. From mild irritability to full-fledged rage, everyone experiences emotional challenges from time to time. In her latest book, 30 Days to Taming Your Anger, special guest Deborah Piguet will provide an indispensable guide for controlling your anger without bearing it or blowing it. Using biblical and modern day stories, you will discover anger taming strategies, such as understanding the underlying emotions that trigger anger, developing a divine perspective towards frustrating people or circumstances, extending grace to others, learning to laugh at yourself. 30 Days to Taming Your Anger provides scripture-based principles, heart-searching personal challenges, and faith declarations that will enable you to find freedom from frustration and fury. For your gift of $20, along with 30 Days to Taming Your Anger, we will also send you Marilyn's Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and Hang-Up CD. On this CD, Marilyn reveals seven truths that will destroy destructive habits, offer help and hope in the face of addictions, and get you started on the road to recovery. These powerful resources will help you along with your 30-day path to taming your anger and changing your life. Call or click today. Sarah and I, of course, are very excited to have Deborah Paget with us again, but on such a special thing, 30 Days to Taming Your Anger, How to Find Peace. Mm. I love this book. I think everybody should get 10 of them because, you know, people, we all live. This is really helps where we live to be miraculous. I know in the second chapter, you say frustration, know when to hold on or fold on. <laughs> Don't hold on to it. Learn how to fold it and let God use it miraculously in your life. Yeah, and there's a chapter, chapter 9 in here, talks about disappointment. And uh, you said how anger is a secondary emotion mm -hmm. and it's a consequence of primary emotions. That's right. One of them being, chapter 9, disappointment. Right. Give us some examples of that. Well, we all want what we want. 
And when we get a plan in our heads, we think that's how it should be. And sometimes we'll get that plan without acknowledging God so he can direct us in all our ways. We just kind of step out in, I call it the sense realm, what we can see and hear in our own rationale. And then when we run into a, a roadblock, we say, oh, I can't believe that didn't happen. I, I, we were talking on the break about uh, when I was engaged to a young man uh, many, many years ago. I've been married almost 34 years now. But I really wanted to marry him and, uh, and maybe even not for the right reason because I was more like money driven. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I kept saying, oh, God, please let it, please let it. And we broke up. And he broke up with me. And I was like, oh, God. Well, several years later, I met my husband. I'm thinking, God, thank you so much. You didn't answer that <laughs> prayer. But I was so disappointed at that time. And so what I've learned, again, is just to say, God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. And I think when we come to God with that nevertheless attitude, no matter what the plan is, you lift that plan up before God and say, this is what I want. Because he really does tell us to let our requests be made known to him. So, Lord, this is what I'm requesting, but I know my knowledge is limited. You, you know, you see the whole parade. You don't just see the drum major. No. You see the end of the parade. You see the whole thing. Right. So I say, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. See what I mean? This is so where we live. How can you bring Jesus into your disappointment and make it an appointment? This wonderful book, and it's not long. It's not a big book. No, How many pages? I, you know, it's it's 140 pages, but it, I cater to the fact that people don't like to read much and people are in a hurry, right. but they need the word. Oh, they so do. So I try to just crystallize it and make sure you get a good word really fast. <laughs> you could read this while you're waiting for your children to come out of school. I mean, you could read this while you're waiting maybe for an appointment with someone. You could read it on an airplane. <laughs> so please call in. Get yours, and I would say, hey, folks, we give people flowers, they wilt, we give them candy, we make them fat, give them <laughs> God's word, and change their lives. Yeah, and we need that. We need it. We totally need it. And some of the, the chapters that you talk about as far as primary emotions, uh, fear, humiliation, rejected, manipulated, disadvantaged, depressed, criticized, betrayed, offended. I mean, I'm hitting some pretty big hot spots yeah, yeah. because that's that's humanity. We deal with this stuff. Well, and we have to deal with the primary emotion so that we don't progress to the anger. So if I feel betrayed, I'll ask myself, now, now how did I play into that? Did I not communicate something? Am I carrying myself in such a needy way that people think that what I want doesn't count? You know, so I give you questions to ask yourself and then scriptural affirmations to make, you know, when you're dealing with that primary emotion. That's really powerful. Yeah. And I like this too, that we address it properly yes. with the person if we need to. You have a chapter here, assert yourself appropriately. Absolutely. See, we have three responses to anger. We can decide to be passive or we can be aggressive or we can be assertive. And a lot of people are passive because we think it's the Christian thing to be. So we keep quiet for peace sake. And that's not in the Bible. You yeah. don't have the peace. The Bible says, if thy brother trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Go and tell him, not keep quiet and simmer and allow that resentment to build up in you. So that's why we have to, so we can choose to be passive. Or I, this is what I like to say, or I can deliberately be passive in a godly way. I can say, I'm going to pass on my right to respond to that. <laughs> nice. I'm just, I'm not being passive. I'm just passing on my right to respond to that. I'm not going to respond to that because everything doesn't require a response. I like it in the Proverbs. It says that um, uh, a, a wise man foresees even takes refuge. But it says, oh no, it says it is to a man's glory to overlook an offense. Overlook an a offense. A man's wisdom gives him patience and it is to his glory to overlook an offense. Not every offense, but an offense. <laughs> and there are a lot of our offenses are vain imaginations. Absolutely. And Do we got to work on not being so easily offended. You yes. know, if you just, whatever your little sensitivity is, you know, even if you're dealing with your weight and the first time somebody talks about somebody being overweight, you go, they're talking about me. <laughs> you know, just practice right. not being offended like that. Just, you know, develop a thick skin. The Holy Spirit can help you develop a thick skin. That's really true. And I love all of it because you speak about these things in this book. And so I just encourage you, each of you watching, obviously you need to get one for yourself, but my suggestion is get three to five of these because I'm telling you, they'll be your friends will make you their best friend <laughs> when you pass this on because every single one of us, we deal with anger in small little incremental ways and on any given day or long big term issues 
that, that are struggles for us even from our childhood. So get on the phone, get on the website, grab, I'd say get five of these because they're tremendous, tremendous tools. And so many of us, we need this revelation. Not only do we need the revelation, but we need the revolution <laughs> yes. That's good. That the revelation good. will put yes. in our hearts. So I'm telling you, you got to get on the phone, you got to get on the website and grab this now because it'll help revolutionize your life through such tremendous revelation. And, and it has revolutionized my life. I like it the fact that when you study something and then you apply it to yourself. Right. I, and that's what I'm living in right now. Ezra 7:10. Marilyn, I know you'll like this, but it talks about the fact that Ezra set his heart to know the word, to do it, and to teach it. Right. And I don't want to just know it and teach it. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want that in my life. I, I am a Bible teacher, but I don't want to just know it and teach it. I don't want to go to God like a waiter. I get food to serve to somebody. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, wait, get the food, eat it. Come to, this is what the Spirit told me, come to the Lord like a pregnant woman. You get nourished, then you eat, and the baby is automatically nourished. Don't just have the goal of, oh, that's a great principle to teach. And so I'm living this. I'm living this, and I'm, I'm, I'm guarding my joy, and I'm, I'm controlling this anger thing. My, I, I grew up in a family where anger was always present in the household. And my house is a house of peace. My husband and I have been married a long time, and we have a peaceful environment because we both practice this. Yes. We, we confront each other. We confront assertively. We do all of that, but we don't just keep quiet for peace sake. And Sarah, this is good for a Bible study. You betcha. You know, you could get eight or ten people together and just go through this because it applies to everybody. So when you call in, think about that. Pray about that. You say, well, there are 20 in our Bible study. Well, then get 20 of these because everybody needs to read it for themselves. That's really true. And I love how practical that you speak about so many things. Uh, just the other day I was being criticized about something. You know, somebody was kind of taking some shots at me and I'm like... Hmm. <laughs> I don't really like that. So, I mean, it's perfect. Well, and criticism comes with doing something good. <laughs> you have to understand that. If you're going to succeed and be all that God wants you to be, somebody's going to evaluate what you're doing. And so you say, oh, that's just that person's evaluation. I don't let somebody's criticism define me. That's just that person's opinion. Yeah, that's really powerful. And you can carry that frustration and then... Uh, I remember in the past, my husband would come home and be really snappy at me. And I'd think, I'm, what's, what's your problem? But he had been offended by wow. someone at church. Then he took it out <laughs> on me. And I think we all do that too. Yeah. And, and, if we, and if we did it the way Jesus told us to, we would just confront that person. And, yeah. and not in a negative way, because no, no. confront means to come together face to face. Mm -hmm. We come together face to face and say, help me to understand what it is that's bothering you. Or have I done something? I can't, I can't believe how few of us do that. <laughs> I've seen leaders who just, I was in a meeting the other week and somebody said, well, maybe we can fix this where the leader doesn't have to take responsibility. I'm like, the buck stops with the leader. <laughs> yeah. You know, come on. You just got to be willing to do that and not worry about being alienated or rejected or any of that. And I talk about that. Being rejected is sometimes one of the primary emotions behind why you're angry. This is awesome. Wow. Yeah. This is right where you live. This is right where I live. I love this book. And so I encourage you again, don't live in frustration and anger and disappointment and rejection and all that garbage. When you have God's word and you have a book that absolutely will lead you to success. So call in, get your book and... Deborah's one of our very favorite guests. <laughs> totally. yes. Thank you. We love hanging out with you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank you. much. You. We I love, love you. it that you love the word. Totally. <laughs> totally. So we're excited. We want you to get on the phone, grab your copies today. Of course, if you have a need in your life, a prayer need, we want to pray for you. Get on the phone, get on the website. We know God has good things for you. You don't have to be a victim of anger. You can be a victor over anger because God has victory for you today. From mild irritability to full-fledged rage, everyone experiences emotional challenges from time to time. In her latest book, 30 Days to Taming Your Anger, special guest Deborah Piguet will provide an indispensable guide for controlling your anger without bearing it or blowing it. Using biblical and modern-day stories, you will discover anger-taming strategies, such as understanding the underlying emotions that trigger anger, developing a divine perspective towards frustrating people or circumstances, extending grace to others, learning to laugh at yourself. 30 Days to Taming 
Overcoming Your Anger provides scripture-based principles, heart-searching personal challenges, and faith declarations that will enable you to find freedom from frustration and fury. For your gift of $20, along with 30 Days to Taming Your Anger, we will also send you Marilyn's Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and hang CD. On this CD, Marilyn reveals seven truths that will destroy destructive habits, offer help and hope in the face of addictions, and get you started on the road to recovery. These powerful resources will help you along with your 30-day path to taming your anger and changing your life. Call or click today. Sarah and I are so excited to invite you to be a part of our team to Ireland and Scotland. Can you imagine? November the 1st through the 12th, 2014. Ministry opportunities in Dublin, Belfast, Scotland. View the magnificent Irish cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean while driving up the western coast, visiting historic churches, castles, and the Ring of Kerry along the way. Mom, it's going to be really powerful. We get to go to Dublin and Belfast and Edinburgh, and we totally want you to come with us. This will be a revolutionary trip for you. Not only do we get to see amazing things, but we also get to participate in ministry all along the trip. So get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you to come with us. We have a brochure for you, and it will absolutely be one of the best trips you've ever taken. Come with us today to Scotland and Ireland. I want to take just a few moments here to minister to you about relationships. Now, the truth of it is, we all have various kinds of relationships. We have shallow kind of surface acquaintances. We have ones that are a little more deep. Then we have some very, very core essential relationships. And we have them across the whole spectrum. We have family relationships. We have friends at school. We have work relationships. All kinds of different relationships in our lives. And if you're like me, sometimes those can be hot spots. Sometimes we have family relationships that are hot spots. So you think, oof, conflict. Uh, sometimes there are work relationships where there's misunderstandings and there's tension and insecurities and all these areas can get a little tricky for us. But I want to encourage you to get on the phone, call right now, get on our website, leave a prayer request for your relationships, for your family. Maybe you have loved ones who don't know Christ and you really want them to know Christ. Or you have friends or coworkers, people in your, in your school that don't know Christ and you really want them to have a very vibrant experience with Christ. Well, get on the phone, get on our website, let us know how we can pray for these individuals. But also I wanna encourage you that when we have relationship struggles and conflicts, that God is there to speak to us, to encourage us and to lead us into truth. Because I have found this in my own life. When I have uh, conflicts and, and you know, there's kind of some tension and some struggles in relationships, I find that God often wants to help me grow as an individual, not only to, to resolve the conflict, but also to understand who I am better and as well to learn how to communicate more effectively and how to be more loving. So I just want to encourage you, when you have conflicts and struggles in relationships, there are opportunities for God to do amazing things in your heart. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you and all of the relationships that you have. <music> 